If you've worked in the game industry at a studio that's part of a larger publishing organization for any length of time, you've probably encountered some form of player segmentation, whether that be as simple as RPG player, FPS player, or something more nuanced like Badass Bard or Conquering Captain. The question that is obvious that comes out of this concept is, is segmentation even a good idea? Should we not be segmenting our players and treating them as a more diverse set? What I would argue is that segmentation can be useful. It can provide you a way to talk about your different kinds of players, but it does come with its own set of pitfalls. By taking our players and kind of dividing them up into different groups, it allows us to bucket our features in different ways. And this can be helpful because it can allow us to realize when we're potentially upsetting one group of people while helping a different group of people. And in some cases, your features are kind of a balancing act of these different segments. If you are making an action RPG, then when you make the game more frenetic, you're serving that action segment more while potentially upsetting the more RPG focused player. So understanding the way that your players break down can be very useful. By segmenting, we are able to figure out how many people fit in each of these different groups, how many people are more focused on relationships and therefore are probably going to care about romances and conversation versus how many people are more focused on combat and therefore are going to care more about new weapons and new abilities. Now, a lot of this comes down to understanding our players better. And what you could suggest is that in a, in a world of very good telemetry, you could base your decisions entirely upon direct data. So rather than having a story focused player segment, you could just look and see how many people actually played the romances in our previous game. And there is an argument to be made there because you're removing the abstraction. You're just going right down to the data. What you lose by going to a directly data-driven thought process is the fact that a lot of these features are linked together or connected into people that behave in similar ways to each other. So if we're Avoiding that, if we're going right to the data, we might see that 65% of people play romances and 65% of people play wizards and do features that serve both romances and wizards and not actually ever realize that the people that are more likely to play wizards are actually leaning into a different group from the people that are actually more interested in romances. So by spending a little bit more time and trying to bucket the features and understand collections and understand patterns, we are able to understand the whole a little bit more strongly. That can get you into trouble because you're generalizing, but that can also be useful because it helps you understand those connections. In the effort to segment people in this way, you can end up focusing on the differences and actually neglecting the similarities. So a great example of this is progression. Almost all players like progression. They like to get better at things. They like to see number go up. It's sort of built into our DNA to want to see this kind of progression. But because it is a common motivation for almost all players, it tends to be stripped out of segmentation analysis. So what you end up with is this group of people likes storytelling. This group of people likes romances. This group of people likes crunchy action. What it doesn't say is all of these people like progression. So what you've actually done is now you're focusing on these three features and you've actually forgotten to care about this feature that's hidden underneath that actually applies to everyone. 
So when you are segmenting people, be careful that you acknowledge, categorize, and speak aloud those motivations that apply to all of your groups or many of your, your groups. Don't strip them out. Don't hide them under a rock because they make the segments feel more distinct from each other. Also, when you are segmenting people, remember Bill, the badass bard, is not a real person. There may be one of your players who is exactly the same as this imaginary persona you invented, but this isn't a real person. This is supposed to be a collection, a group, a uh, simplification of your audience. So try to remember that because they can change. This segment can change and evolve and reflect the changing dynamic of the world. What was defined as an RPG 25 years ago is a lot different from what's defined as an RPG today. Today, we include a lot more action and a lot more romance and a lot more relationship stuff. So it's actually moved in both directions. These segments are used as conversation starters, as ways to categorize the value of your different features. But we should always remember that they really are representations of bumps in the curve, that there is a spectrum of people that fit and lie everywhere on these categorizations, on the road between turn-based and hyper-action, there are people that sit everywhere on that spectrum. There are people that sit right between Conquering Captain and Badass Bard, or right between FPS player and RPG player. And by at least acknowledging that, even as you potentially maintain your use of these segments, you can remember that a feature that is pretty appealing to both groups can actually be very appealing to people that fit in between these two groups. And often the reality is when you're targeting two or three different segments, what you're really doing is you're targeting the union of those three. Ideally, you hopefully aren't just targeting the intersection of those three. So the thing that segmentation does is it reminds us that you need to have features for all of the individual segments, not just the overlap that appeals to that central group. But it also should remind us that we are targeting a diverse group of potential players. So for me, segments and segmentation can be a useful exercise. It is worth thinking about things through these lenses, but don't let those lenses blind you to other things. Don't allow the desire to make your segments very distinct from each other, allow you to actually discard motivations or desires that apply to multiple segments, because those are actually way more important. Don't allow the personas you build for your segments to forget that there are people that fit between your segments. This is a tool like any other, and if overused, it can cause very bad behavior. But that doesn't mean that we shouldn't be prepared to use it as a tool. A special thanks to my members. They provide the resources that this channel needs to keep running. If you're interested in becoming a member, there's a link down in the description. Do you think segmentation is just profiling? Does it get us into more trouble than it helps with? Should we abandon it completely and just make games? Do you have things that you think are overlooked that are segments that should exist that maybe are underserved by the game industry? Let me know that down in the comments. We have merch now. This is High Tea on the High Seas. If you're interested in picking something up, there's a shelf below this video. That will help the channel out as well. I will see you again soon. Thank you.